What is up, guys? It is Power Bang. Welcome back to another Clash of Clans video. We are live. The last 14 minutes of the war. WHF down by a lot right now, but we're going to try to clutch this one out at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look right now at the war events. Mixed Leather just dip failed, so that kind of puts us up by one attack right now. It seems like we're down by a lot, but we're actually uh, in an okay spot. As you can see, towards the bottom, number 19, 21, 22, all with zero stars on them. Fresh, uh, fresh hits still to come. And we do have another 25 that only has one star. So a lot of stars to gain still for the WHF side. Over on the Spartans Legacy side, they've hit nearly every base, if not every base. Yeah, every base. So any attack that they pull, they have three left right now. Uh, you can see that there is one Town Hall 11 left, Mudkey. And they've got a couple Town Hall 10s, I believe. They've got Groovy Tony with an attack, and they also have Grizz, their leader. So, lots of pressure going to be on them for those attacks. They've really got to come through. Two Town Hall attend, uh, two Town Hall 10 attacks remaining, and we're just going to kind of sit and watch the end of this war. Now, on our side, we've got one, uh, two Town Hall 11 hits left. We've got Hexagram uh, with one, as well as Itsu, who, uh, for those of you that don't know, a lot of you guys probably don't, Itsu is now part of the WHF family. Uh, he has a couple of accounts here as well. We also have a couple other pickups from the Dark Looters uh, that have decided to come over and play with us for CWL Season 3 as they've decided they want to keep playing competitively. So, welcome to those guys, and uh, trial by fire, man. Welcome to, the, welcome to the crunch time, man. It's not like they haven't done this before, but WHF 98... Spartans Legacy 105. We're going to be watching for the live attacks. There's only 13 minutes to go in the war right now. So that's where things are at. It's going to be super, super close. I already know it. Uh, we look at the, the board right now. Itsu still has uh, to get a star on him. So he's only got uh, one star on his base right now. Now it's held strong um, pretty well. The story of the war, honestly, though, has been WHF's inability to get two stars on the Town Hall 11s. The hit rate is atrocious, awful, like embarrassingly bad. Um, but that, that being said, we're still up by an attack, even though it's been completely crap at the 10v11 level. Yuli Badel, thank you for that new sub. Appreciate that. Welcome to Banger Nation. Uh, I'll be picking a new, uh, subscriber of the day towards the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, 12 minutes left to go. Don't want to show any replays right now, guys, because I do not want to miss the lives. There are eight attacks still to happen in this war, only 12 minutes to go. So we know that there's going to be an action-packed finish here, and every single attack is going to be crucial. You can see for WHF, two Town Hall 11 hits, as we talked about. We also have three uh, Town Hall 10 hits remaining. We have Ricky Clasher, three Poached Lamp, as well as Red. All of these guys, fantastic 10v10 uh, hitters for us, and it's going to be really interesting to see what happens here. So, counting it down, we just had the War Events. Um, Hooky, <laughs> dude, just dropped an 83 percent two star on a town hall 11 uh, we will try to bring that one up towards the end of this episode once the war is all said and done and i will show you guys an absolutely beast hit for a town hall 10 versus 11 uh attack and he got 83 percent literally would have uh nearly three starred it with a few few tweaks so uh we're gonna use that potentially as a 11 v 11 tweak if uh if we need to hit there later on in this war so we'll see what happens i believe we're gonna have enough town hall tens to keep us plenty busy but really good stuff from uh Hookie there so 98 105 is the margin seven stars separate the clans right now and again guys uh you can see the three star attacks completely knotted up right now uh, with only three attacks remaining for Spartans Legacy, five attacks remaining for WHF. Uh, so it's it's really anybody's game right now. It's all about executing these last few attacks. So these kind of videos, I know you guys really liked them in the past. They're hard for me to create because I hate, like, the lull. Like, I don't know when they're going to hit. It's so suspenseful. It's so, like, I, I just don't know what's happening. But I'm, like, I'm stressing out right now because we really want to get this win. We really didn't bring the, the game that we wanted to bring uh, for Week 1 CWL action. Uh, so to get out of here with a win, I would feel very fortunate, um, if not to say lucky, uh, to get out of here with as bad as we played at the Town Hall 9, as well as 10v10, or 10v11, rather, uh, it would be something else if we could get out of here with a win. I know Spartans Legacy had their struggles at the 10v11 level as well. They still are trying to clear ours, uh, with 10 minutes to go in the war now. They still have to take out Itsu, and we're looking at the same thing on their side. We're still trying to take out Mudkey here. 10 v 11 game still not settled with less than 10 minutes ago now in the war so gonna be really interesting wanted to kind of record it I, I didn't know when to start recording because i felt like you know there's eight attacks left in the war 
you know, 10 minutes to go, obviously we're going to have to start seeing live. So here we go. Hexagram RX is going to be the one that kicks off the action for us today. He's bringing the mass miner here. Rage Bell in the CC, it looks like, as well as five heal spells in this army composition. He is going to be bringing the heroes on the sides to help funnel, uh, get those miners to go inwards. He's got the Grand Warden on ground with them. And this is a really, really popular dip strategy uh, to take out a Town Hall 10 base. And you can see he's just trying to kind of get in there. Uh, take out these, uh, you know, defenses as quickly as possible. The Rage Bell is uh, used going into the Queen. And here is a couple of heal spells straight off the bat. Now he waits and is very patient with that Balloon. Drops the Poison once he knows where it's going to path. Now it was a little bit shallow. The Balloon obviously is going to path inward. But I think he got enough Poison on it. Yes, he does to take it out. CC is now not an issue, guys. So here we go. Grand Warden ability was used. And that's going to keep all those miners kind of full health going into the backside here. Can they get to the Inferno Tower in a timely manner is the question. Double bomb there waiting for them. They do take it out in one shot. Can we get another heal spell down? Uh, here it is in time. Yes, he does get the miners up. He is looking okay right now. Uh, but there is a lot of splash damage coverage at the end of this one. And a lot of those miners were not protected uh, by the heal spell there. So they heal a little bit in this place, and it does look like the queen is going to be taken out of the raid here momentarily. She locks on to the hound, and it's all about these final few miners here and how quickly they can move through the rest of this base. So I think we're going to be good to go on this one. Hexagram has plenty of miners left over. It's all about uh, taking out this wizard tower because that's the only thing that can stop him at this point. You see he does get a split there. Takes out the wizard tower. We're down to 99%. Gets the three stars. So nice work to Hexagram picking that one up. That is a fresh hit. We do have Ricky Clasher live as well right now at Town Hall 10 for WHF. And he is going to be bringing... Wow, Hog Rider. So here we go. We've got a Queen Charge going into this base. You can see uh, Queen first taking out the King, and now she's going to be taking out uh, the Queen. But look at this Poison Spell. Absolutely perfectly placed, taking out the CC as well as the Queen with that. And here comes the Hogs. Starts off with the King uh, taking care of some funneling on the right as well as distracting these defenses. Check this out. Archer Tower now distracted as well. And it looks like we have uh, a direct target now for the Inferno. He didn't get in as far as he wanted to with the hogs because he wanted to trigger that nope no bombs there he does get the skelly traps triggered so that's good it's now on to the queen and now here comes the hog riders you're gonna see them early on with a freeze there's the double bomb he wanted to kind of get that triggered early uh, but he's able to overcome and keep pushing through the base so now the queen pushing her way through the top side here where's the rage spell going to be used in the middle or towards the inferno it is in the middle so here comes the hogs kind of everything cruising through there beautiful poison on those hogs here comes the hogs can they get through and take out enough defenses for the clean the queen to clean everything up here can they make it oh no they do hit a giant bomb that is a brutal one they are not going to finish off the rest of this base. The Queen pounds through the wall, uses the ability, and then switches directions. That is a, a soul-crushing uh, direction change there. You can see the Queen started to beat on the wall there, and it just wasn't meant to be. So she's going to open up the outside of the wall here. We do have cleanup. Uh, still, the uh, Mortar is going to go down to this wizard here, it looks like. Or at least the next wizard that's coming up. So... Things looking okay right now. It's all about uh, staying out of Inferno range, but the problem is I don't see this CC in the middle getting taken care of. It looks like the wizard will be able to access this uh, this elixir storage. I don't think that this is going to end up being successful, though. Everything looking good except for uh, potentially the CC in the middle of the base. You see he drops everything else to try to get through the wall here, um, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen uh, anytime soon. So... Bummer, man. Absolute bummer. He he does look like he would have enough to, to take out this base had he have the time, but it's not, not looking likely right now, guys. So down to 96% um, pop, and she's going to click another wall there. So good try uh, for... Okay, so where are we at? Let's take, let's take status of what happened. Groovy Tony failed. Uh, it looks like Grizz failed on Itsu getting any stars. So two fails for them. That still puts us up one attack. Um, and Ricky Clasher was able to get the two-star there, 96%. So we are down to five minutes left in the war. One attack left for Spartan's Legacy. The best that they can do, uh, let's see who's to hit here. I believe it's their Town Hall 11 Mudkey. Yes, it is. Uh, let's see the best that they can do, it looks like, is add two stars by three-starring uh, Itsu. Uh, but most likely, other than that, he's only going to be able to add one star no matter where he goes. So it looks like Spartan's Legacy tops out 106 stars. Now for the WHF side... Three attacks left, and two of these are one now, I guess. Uh, Hexagram just went 
is Itsu. And we know Itsu is obviously very talented. And it looks like right here, he can take out Clouds with the fresh dip triple uh, to go ahead and put 106 on the board. So three poach layup, if he can three star this, that will uh, toss it up for anyone else to be able to add a star and uh, get it done for the win. So come back. Oh, I don't know if it's going to happen, guys, but nearly in hand here. Three poach layup is live. He's going to be hitting out the, uh, the air defenses here. Doing some queen charge action. You can see he's got the, uh, what is this? I can't remember what the name of this attack is, but he's got balloons, 16 minions. So quite a few minions here. He's going to follow them through uh, the base with his Lalo attack. So one hog rider as well. It's probably going to be used for the CC lure here in just a moment. As soon as he takes down these last couple of defenses, he'll probably target this, uh, this bomb tower over here after it's cleared. So let's watch and see what happens. Here comes first wall breaker for the test. He does, oh, look at that. Yep, there's a, there's a bomb there. So here comes the uh, CC lure. It actually worked out. Queen did get in range, so he's going to drop in the Hog Rider anyway. Opens up the wall. Beautiful tanking for the Wall Breakers. Uh, looks like the Balloon does go down without getting a bomb off. And look at that. The Hog Rider takes out the, uh, the cannon and is moving on to the Archer Tower now. So extreme value there for a single Hog Rider. Not bad at all. Drops in a couple of archers to take out the pups. And that hog got all the way down to the final sliver of health on the archer tower. So not bad uh, at all there for three poach layups. So here we go on the top. King still going around. Really good funneling. And it is all about getting in and taking out this inferno tower now with the queen. Problem is we're running short on time. Down to a minute and 30. Still don't have the main army on the field. With this attack, it can snowball really quickly, so he needs to have the troops on the field by about a minute and 15 seconds to have a good shot at three-starring the base because there is still a lot left to go. So here we go. Inferno Tower is live, negates the healing spell. There is the... Uh, oh, no. He uses the ability, and it looks like the, uh, the queen does get the Inferno Tower. That was honestly very, very close. Low HP there for the queen, but she is going to continue... Uh, perhaps. It looks like uh, she is going to be overwhelmed over there. That was very interesting. I don't know how only two of the uh, the defenses were able to take him out. Heal spell down in the center of the base. Do the loons get in there? No, they don't in time. They are being chipped away at uh, right now. The goal is to have the queen come over, take out these Teslas, but it's just not looking as though uh, he's going to have the power uh, that he wanted. Now, he still may get this accomplished. It looks like he does get in there with the loons, but too much on the backside here. The queen was supposed to go through and help that out. So this is going to be a fail. We are going to back out, try to catch what else is going on. It is three poach layup again. We'll stay out of there. Okay, so where does that leave us? Three poach layup is a fail. Now we've got uh, just Itsu and uh, who else? Itsu and Red. So Red uh, was already able to hit, I believe he hit number four. So he cannot hit number four again. So he's going to have to go for a 10v10 triple here. And let's see if there's any plans that he can get close on. Hexagram, probably not. Uh, clouds, I'm sure Itsu will hit that one. And then I'm guessing right there is you're going to be your target for red. We've got Ricky Clasher with a 96% on that one. So really kind of focusing in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow whoever... Uh, Whoever I can get in on, basically, here. One minute, 30 seconds to go left in the war. So we are not going to be able to watch all the attacks, but I want to watch whatever I can get in on. So let's see here. 103, 105. Uh, it all comes down to this, guys. Spartan's Legacy can add a two, two star if they go for the triple on the Town Hall 11. Now, I don't know if Mudkey is going to feel it on uh, the base here. You can see Red is in right now. Mudkey is live as well. I'm, I assume he's going to go for the three-star on a Town Hall 10 and try to secure the uh, dip and hope that we fail. Uh, but if Red three-stars this base, this leaves us in a very, very good position. I do believe that uh, I do believe the guys over at Spartan's Legacy have the percentage, though. So that could come into play as well if Red's not able to capitalize here. So you're going to see the Naked Queen walk here come and take out a couple of Archer Towers, the uh, Wizard Tower here, and then he's trying to get the Inferno. Hopefully nothing pops like... Oh, no, she goes to the wrong... Oh, brutal, dude. That's terrible pathing, in my opinion. So whatever. He's going to send in a few balloons here to the Inferno to try to rescue it. Um, maybe he had that planned all along. I don't know. It, it certainly... Oh, no. And then he's going to fail on the balloons as well. Oh, so brutal. So that sucks. He's going to have to send in a couple of miners directly targeting that uh, probably early on. Um, there they go. They do target the uh, town hall, rather. So this is going poorly right now for Red. Oh, my goodness. That is just unfortunate. I thought the queen was going to be able to pick up that Inferno Tower. No can do. That extra space there made it. Uh, yeah, that just sucks, man. So it looks like the 
Miners take care of business. However, he's going to have to lose that whole group over there uh, because, you know, he's he just didn't have it. So he drops as late a heal as he possibly can, but just too much firepower, not enough value on that heal. Uh, it looks like the bowlers and the king and the miners pushing their way through, and there's just going to be too much at the end of this base to try to get through. Uh, he still has a heal spell left. He doesn't have uh, the CC taken care of. It looks like the balloon is just going to be able to roast him as he gets hung up on these skeletons here. So this is a little bit unfortunate. Looked like he had a really good plan, and it just kind of didn't work out for him. So all miners down. We're going to back out and see what we can see. It looks like uh, Itsu is live right now. We can't get in there. Mudkey on Itsu right here. They're going big right now, trying to get the three-star. Not able to do it, it looks like. So Itsu's base holds up, and wouldn't you know it, uh, he is able to kind of MVP it. He is going to pick up one star here, it looks like, on the uh, the town hall. This warden is going to play the hero, so that's actually really lucky uh, for him that that was able to happen. And it comes down to percentage, guys. I don't know uh, if if things are... Actually, no. Itsu's going to... Ah! Itsu's going to lock it up, dude. We're already at 106. He needs one more star there. Uh, we can get in. It, do we have it? Do we have it? Do we have it? Oh, yeah, we have it. All right, so there it is, guys. Minor City coming through. We're able to take out this final base here. Holy crap. Grand Warden tanking. One minute, 26 seconds left in this one. Mudkey not able to pick up the three-star on the Town Hall 11. Itsu, so Itsu defends, and Itsu attacks for the win. Oh! Oh, nice work to Itsu. That is the way to uh, make a debut for WHF. Very nice work to him. Getting the couple of dips there. That is awesome. War has ended. There it is, guys. That's your final 107-106. We do end up winning on percentage as well. Uh, so GG to Spartans Legacy, guys. You played well. Uh, both clans didn't really have their A game for this one. But, hey, it's okay. We're happy to get out of here with the win. My goodness gracious, WHF. Oh, my God. I feel lucky to escape here uh, getting the victory. But I'm hyped up, guys. 107-106. We'll take that for a week one victory to start CWL. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that attack I promised you earlier, the one by Hookie. 10 v 11. This was a monstrous raid. Let's go ahead and watch this. So... Has an interesting army composition here. Only three healers with this queen charge, as well as uh, four rages. He's got 14 bowlers, and he also has uh, several wall breakers here, seven of them, and six baby dragons. So six baby dragons, quite a few. Uh, let's see how he uses those. So at the bottom, here is the three healer uh, queen charge. He drops in the CC, and look at that. The CC has a balloon, as well as more healers. So efficient use there. He guesses the uh, Sam placement. A lot of these town hall bases, especially with the, the box designs and the corner and the mortars, they all have their air bombs roughly in the same spot. So he guesses, takes out the uh, <laughs> the Sam there, and he's going to do it again here in just a little bit. So we'll fast forward a little bit through the queen charge down the wall. Uh, things looking really good so far for Hookie. Great charge. And uh, you're going to start seeing the king coming down uh, over on the right. So there's another Sam taken out. That ensures all the healers are going to stay alive. Golem comes down, attracts all of that fire down there. And there it is. It looks like uh, the funnel has been created. Wall breakers open everything up. Baby dragons take out the uh, the buildings around the corner. Everything headed in now. So free spell down. Early poison is down. And here comes the bowlers. Can they get this inferno tower? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they are good. Queen does not break through the wall, and she goes around, which is totally fine. We were hoping maybe she'd break in. Uh, but at the same time, he's got four baby dragons left, or three now, uh, in the camps. He sends one in, and he's targeting that town hall directly. So it's all about uh, getting that town hall taken care of. He's already up to 60%, and the queen is still charging. So as soon as the bowlers go down in the core, you can see that's just about to happen. Now the healers go back over to the queen, and look at that. They're healing her back up. And there is the rage spell to keep her going. And then more baby dragons trickled into the town hall. Perfectly done. And he starts with the cleanup on the top as well uh, with his remaining baby dragons. So up to 66%. His queen still has rage and the healers. And she still has her ability working her way through. Hooky with the massive monster raid here uh, towards the end of the war. This ended up being super clutch. Uh, nice work to him as we are able to uh, pop that ability. Get the expo. Then check this out. Gets the storage. Gets another archer tower and then gets the uh, the final uh, air defense as well. So you're going to see this uh, this baby dragon. Watch this. So it takes out a couple of buildings and then watch the pathing. 
goes inside to take out this archer tower, and it's not done yet. It's ending up going to be a time fail, because he would have got, you know, a cup or not time fail, time success, but he stopped as a, uh, a result of the time clock running out. 83%, though, to wrap up the two-star guy. So that is going to do it. Final score, 107-106 in favor of WHF. Itsu makes his WHF debut and is able to get the last attack for the win. Great job to him, and I uh, hope to have him on the channel here in the near future. We'll do some collaborations for you guys. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you like the episode, hit the like button for me. And if you're new here and uh, you, know, you want to subscribe... Feel free to do that. I got more Clash of Clans stuff coming soon. We're going to look at today's subscriber of the day. Got to give a massive thank you uh, to my man, Tony Clayton. So, Tony Clayton, thank you so much for uh, for dropping the sub, man. Really appreciate that. Uh, you the bomb. So, thank you so much, guys, for the support on the channel. I'm out of here for now. This is Power Bank signing out. Till next time, take care.